Hello, I recently received a comment on my latest video uh, from Aruna Meta asking uh, if I could make a video uh, showing how to uh, how I made uh, the animations for the Kipa video. So I thought that I would just sit down and go through uh, my video making process a little bit. <clears throat> uh, so the script for the video uh, looks like this. It came from, uh, this was the initial write-up that I did for, uh, for the topic of this video, right? And this was something that I decided to write in uh, July of last year uh, when the uh, SOS Cuba protest broke out. And I saw a lot of people confused about the historical relations between the United States and Cuba. And so I wanted to write an article. <clears throat> this was never published. Um, because I kind of didn't finish it. And it just kind of eventually made its way into a, a, a script for a video instead. But uh, yeah, that, that's when I wrote this uh, uh, initially uh, when I did the research and gathered all of the uh, sources uh, as well. So uh, when talking about the embargo, I came across uh, this source here uh, from 20... No, yes, this one from 2021 uh, from, from the United Nations uh, news website where uh, Bruno Rodriguez Perea talks about um, how the <clears throat> uh, embargo uh, is an economic war and such. And I, I think I wanted to compare the voting result from, from this year to the last time the UN voted for ending the embargo. And so I, uh, where is it? So I went back to 2019 and then that's when I came across uh, this uh, part, blockade as an act of genocide. Uh, also, Pedro Rodriguez Perea, and here he talks about uh, the convention of uh, the UN Genocide Convention, Articles 2B and C. Uh, and that's kind of how I got the idea for the video. One part of the article, and originally it was going to be part of the video as well, but was a section about. Uh, U.S. aid and the Office of Transition Initiatives and the the hundreds of millions of dollars being spent on uh, propaganda campaigns and and uh, you know transition initiatives like trying to overthrow the Cuban government. Um, and I was gonna go over like USA spending uh, and all that stuff. I do have uh, a spreadsheet. I linked it in the comments of my Cuba video. I put together this spreadsheet around the same time as I was writing the article, just uh, getting uh, going on the USA spending uh, DACA website and finding uh, grants awarded to different agencies um, that uh, mention Cuba in some way, right? So this one is a USAID contract to Creative Associates International for $22 million. Uh, the program, the relevant program office is the Office of Transition Initiatives, and the stated purpose is Cuban Civil Society Support Program. Uh, SWIFT 2 task order awarded to Creative Associates International for DHC slash OTIs, that's the Office of Transition Initiatives, Cuban Civil Society Support Program. Uh, there's not much more you can find out. The best way to find more information about stuff like this. And the reason I'm including this in part of the video um, is because like, this is something that you can do yourself, not just with Cuba, but with, with anything. All right, you just go on usaspending.gov. You look up you know, some search word, Libya or whatever, Nigeria, uh, or the USAID, right? Agency for International Development. You can look up their page specifically. Um, and, and you can like look at what they're up to, right? 
uh, you say South Africa, Uganda, Nigeria, Zambia, and you see how much money they're spending, and then you can look into those transactions, see exactly what what the relevant programs or offices are, and try to figure out what all this money is going toward. Uh, if you're interested, it's just kind of uh, yeah, it might be relevant if you're doing a similar project. Uh, looking at uh, the United States uh, State Department and USA involvement in other countries uh, for human rights purposes, quote unquote, from the PSL had a pretty good article that I didn't really use all that much, but it talked about uh, I think the the John F the the, the Kennedy Assassination uh, Act and things like that that released a bunch of. Um, um, papers uh that used to be classified and and it kind of got me to like look up uh you know old uh old documents and stuff like that and operation mongoose was actually going to be part of the video originally um operation uh mongoose and um operation um I forgot what the other one was. The uh, the one that never happened because of the Cuba, the Cuban Missile Crisis interrupted it. But the one that was planned and approved was like Operation Northwoods, I believe, which included plans to like kill U.S. civilians and blame it on Cuba and stuff. Uh, but it it I don't know. It didn't really fit into the video. It, so I I ended up just scrapping that part and focusing the video entirely on just the embargo and not on. You know the CIA the assassinations and sabotage, uh, and, you know, killing of of Cubans and all that stuff. Even though, like, the CIA's like terror campaign uh, in Cuba is uh, is is very relevant and important to talk about. And if you're interested in it, you just Google Operation Mongoose, also known as the Cuban Project. A lot of these documents are available on. There should be a website for the Kennedy assassination. Uh, the Kennedy Assassination Act files. I forget what it's called. Kennedy Assassination Act documents. Archives.gov research JFK. JFK assassination records. Yeah. There you can find a lot of them. Uh, a lot of the documents that are mentioned here on the, on the Wikipedia page. Uh, and then there's also... Uh, Operation Northwoods, which you can also look up if you're interested. Um, should have some of, yeah, like this one. A memorandum about justifying a war uh, with a false flag operation in Cuba uh, in the National Archive. Uh, also unclassified after the Kennedy Assassination Act. Let's uh, move on to how I actually made the video itself. Because uh, basically what I did, I, I wrote this article and then I just wrote, made it into a script. Uh, added a note here about including this specific part of the documentary. Yeah. I used this one, Fidel the Untold Story. Uh, upscaled by uh, Joseph Redman, uh, who I think DM'd me one day and told me like, hey, I know you like this documentary. I upscaled it using AI and uploaded it. So, uh, yeah, if you're going to watch this documentary, the 720, uh, 720p upscale by Joseph Redman uh, is pretty good quality. Better, uh, like It's better than, than the original, which is pretty low quality. Uh, this documentary... It's from Bravo Films, 2001. It's just like a biographical documentary about Fidel Castro himself. Uh, but then in the middle, it go. It does a very good... Um, it has like a very good account of the, the Cuban Revolution and, you know, the actions of the revolutionary government immediately uh, uh, succeeding the revolution and the, the fallout of the relationship with the United States and stuff. It's a very good documentary. It's on YouTube, Joseph Redmond's channel. Uh, heavily recommend it. Um, if you're interested in uh, Cuba and the Cuban Revolution and all. 
so then I recorded the script. I used Adobe Audition for that. Blah 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 blah. Right now I'm what I'm I'm recording the screen captured with uh, OBS, but uh, for recording scripts I use uh, Adobe Audition. Blah 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 blah. I use a effect as uh, under here under effects, amplitude and compression and uh, dynamics. And I have a preset here that ha includes an audio gate. And uh, I can't really s I can't zoom in here, but uh, I'm, if you open up the video in full screen, you can just pause and look at the settings that I use. Uh, only audio gate and compressor. I don't use the expander or limiter. Don't go overboard on the compressor though, because it makes it sound like a radio program. Uh, and then when that's done, I import the audio into Adobe Premiere. Um, and uh, for this opening scene, I'm just reading uh, the quote of uh of this the the memo which by the way um uh, it's on the office of the historian history .state gov it's in foreign relations of the united states 1958 to 1960 cuba volume 6 uh which you can find under historical documents you can also just search for cuba or foreign relations cuba um and here is a chapter called Inauguration by the United States government of a policy to weaken the Cuban economy, April to July 1960, documents 499 to 548. Uh, and under that is document 499, and that is the one that I read on the video. Memorandum from the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Inter-American Affairs to the Assistant Secretary of State for Inter-American Affairs. So, right... This uh, wooden background here, I found on a website that I use a lot called Pexels, pexels.com. Um, and if you search for wood, I think he'll probably be one of the first ones to come up. Here it is. By FW Studio. Uh, all photos are free to use. Attribution is not required. You can modify the photos. Be creative. So Pexels uh, has a lot of royalty-free images and videos, um, actually. Uh, really, I think Pexels is probably like the the most useful uh, website for finding like images and video. Um, I wanted to get like a video of a bunch of people laughing. Then. Uh, there's one, and it's just like, you know, generic stock footage of some people laughing, but it's free to use, right? Uh, it's royalty free, no copyright, you don't have to pay for it, you don't have to go to Shutterstock or whatever. Some other ones that I use, Wikimedia Commons, uh, most, pretty much everything uploaded to Wikimedia Commons, uh, images, uh, some audio, a few videos maybe, but mainly images is what I use it for, are uh, uh, royalty-free. Uh, open clip art. Actually, my favorite is publicdomainvectors.org. Um, has a lot of great stuff. Uh, I use a program called Inkscape to edit uh, vectors. Vector images are basically, they're pictures, but they're made up of like geometric shapes. And so you can scale them up or down without them losing quality. Uh, and then to get it into a working PNG, you just go File, Export PNG. And then right here, you can make this as big as you want, and it's not gonna be pixelated, right? It's not gonna get blurry, it's not gonna look weird because it's a vector. You can scale it up and down infinitely, as much as you want. We have Ira Sutoya, which has a Japanese style clip art. There's a lemon battery, if you, <laughs> if you need clip art of a lemon battery uh you can get that solar panels and yeah various things uh, and that's all free to use as well it's royalty free uh and then there's also japaclip.com very similar style 
as the first one. So if you want to like be, use consistent styles in your video for your clip art, use these two websites combined. They have a lot of images uh, that you can use. Okay, so uh, the editing. So I got this wooden background, right, from Pexels. Uh, and I slap it in here. Now this memo image I just made in Photoshop is just... Um, and then I uh, just put it in here. Um, and I click on this little stopwatch up here. Toggle animation. Set the position. So the position is determined by X coordinates and Y coordinates. So on this, so on the timeline, down here, up here, you can see, um, this memo starts out in this position, 960, 1757, right? 1757, that's how much up and down it is. So I can move that up and down, determine where it starts. And then 960, that's how centered it is. And that remains constant. Uh, obviously, the document moves from down here, and then it slowly moves up as I'm reading the document. Uh, okay, and then we, if we go forward in the animation, uh, right here, one second in to the video, uh, the document will have moved to 1669.4. That's just a random, that's just, I just drag this back and forth, I don't set the numbers, like, precisely. And that's all, you, you just need t two key points, and then it will animate between them. Washington. So, Washington. You just need those two key points. These two numbers, right? 1757, go forward a second, 1669, and it's a bit, it's gone up, and it will just animate it for you. It goes up like that. Um, and then there are further key points. Now, to get it to stay in one place like this, what you do is you take this key point right here, 1669.4, copy it, and then you go forward to for however long you want the document to remain in place, right? So in this case, we go to three seconds, 22 milliseconds in. And there we have a copy of this original keyframe, right? So that means right here, at one second in, the document will be at 1669.4. And then in 2.22 seconds, it's going to be at the same position, right? And the program will, will interpret that as it's not going to move, right? So nothing happens in between these two. But then there's another keyframe right here at 5 seconds, 19 milliseconds in, where it's moved to 1575, right? So that means from here to here, it is going to move. So let's just play that back. Washington. I say Washington, it moves on to Washington, and then it pauses. April 6th, 1960. Memorandum. And then, after I've read that, and I start to read memorandum of the blah blah, I start to read the title of the memorandum. Then it starts to down from the deputy assistant, sec and then it stops again. Right. So it moves to here, moves to this position, and then right here, there's a copy of this position, and that makes it stay. As I'm reading, the text is on the screen. Then it moves down, and then it moves down, and that's just how it's done the whole time. It moves down, it stops, it moves down, it stops, it moves down, it stops. You could do this whole thing, theoretically, with just... Uh, actually, we could do that as a, as a test if you want. Take this, the original key point, keyframe, right? And then... We just delete... All other... Keyframes... Except the one at the very end. Right, so at the very end, we want it to be here. At the very beginning, we want it to be here. Washington. And that's technically all you need. 1960. Memorandum from the Deputy Assistant But as you can tell, uh, at this point, I'm already reading Memorandum of... I've already started reading the title, and it's not even on the screen yet. Secretary of State for Inter-American Affairs to the Assistant... Like, I just read Inter-American Affairs, and that's not even on the screen yet, so... You only get the title of the memo 
after I've already read it, like the first line of the title of the memo. I've already read it, and that's when it first shows up on the screen. So um, you can do it in the very simple way, and it will save you a lot of time, but it's going to be out of sync with the audio because when I'm reading the script, I'm starting and stopping and starting and stopping as I read the different segments. So, yeah. That's how you do that. Uh, these ones, uh, the image is popping up on screen. These ones I just took from Wikimedia Commons. Uh, if you go on the Wikipedia page, so Lester D. Mallory, for example. Let's say I want to put up a picture of Lester D. Mallory. Lester D. Mallory. There he is. Here's an image. Click on more details. And we can see it is in the public domain. And you can get the original file, save that, you can get it in different sizes, right? And this is uh, on, on Wikipedia, on Wikimedia Commons, right? So that means uh, that it's in the public domain, usually, right? So you can see, if you see this logo right here, that means it's in the public domain. That means you can use it. Uh, so that's this image right here. And for this one, what I've animated is the opacity. Uh, so at the beginning, right here, click the stopwatch, toggle animation. It starts off at 0% opacity, meaning that it's completely transparent. And then this far into the video is at 100% opacity. From here to here, it goes from 0 to 100. All right. And then it stays at 100. And then right here, I want it to fade out. So it goes from 100 zero easy enough and this text right here lester d mallory that's just his name written in the with the text graphic tool and it just does the same thing uh, right here opacity and um, you can animate anything you want uh in this exact same way with uh with keyframes you can animate rotation um, and that's the same method that I'm just using for all of these, right? The document moves up. These different images fade in, they fade out. And um, right here, I will reveal to you the secret of how uh, I'm doing the classroom. So here we have this first image and that just looks like this uh, flagpole is its own thing this is the screen that I pulled down at one point in the video um, this is what's on the blackboard and uh, that's also on the blackboard and then up here I got my character I have the uh, you can't see it because it's uh, the black arm is back black, but this is the arm uh, that you can see right here. So this arm is separate, a separate part of the body. It's a separate image. Uh, I could do this all in like Flash or like uh, Adobe Animation, but I don't have I don't have the patience to learn how to do that. But I don't have the patience to learn how to do that, so I just don't. And then this image right here. It's just this stick, uh, the desk, that's its own image. And then this is a part of the wall that goes above the, the screen, right? So the projector screen is, uh, see if we remove this, you can see that this projector screen that uh, I pull, you see, I, like I pull it down at one point in the video, right? And it goes down like this. Well, it has to come down from somewhere so that its position is up here. And to cover that up is this image of uh, the background. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you just have images on the screen. And the way that you get this uh, stick to move, pretty simple. You just, uh, so you have a rotation right here, negative seven degrees, and then you rotate it a bit. 
So let's say we wanted to move it down instead of up. We can just do that. And then why does the we'll move like why that. does the United States then, because there's a key point right here, we'll try to move back up again. Um so yeah, that's how that works. But you have to make sure that the anchor point of this stick is in the right place. And the anchor point is the point like the ax uh, the axis or the axle around which the object will rotate. Uh, so the anchor point uh, of this stick is simply located like at the base right here of itself, right? So so at the uh, at the bottom end of the stick is where its own anchor point is. And so that way when you rotate it, it rotates around that axle, right? So you can see the center of where the stick is rotating. Uh, that's the anchor point. Uh, and then right here, uh, this fancy bit of animation is um, basically just three slash four different animations happening at the same time. So you have the character. So if you remember, the character is separate from the arm. So I can move it left to right. I can even move it up and down. Uh, so this animation simply takes this uh, character to right here. So it moves from the left to the right. And then at the same time, if you look at the under position, uh, the arm also moves left to right at the same time as it rotates. So you can see, if we move this down, then, well, then it doesn't rotate, right? Because it goes from 30 to 36. But if we move it down even more, like this, then we can see that the arm moves forward, but it rotates down while it does so. But yeah, so arm moves to the right and rotates up. Again, the anchor point of the arm is at the base right here where it meets the body. So it looks like it's rotating uh, or it looks like it's, it's just moving up like an arm does, right? And the stick, same thing, position, moves left to right. And it rotates Boom, like that. So um, the way to to do an animation like this is um, say I want to go from right here, and I want to move the stick back up to up here. Uh, yeah, we have the time to do that. All right. Uh, so, we'll begin by creating key points right here, at the beginning of the animation. And then we'll say, about this far in, I want this stick to move up, to rotate this way. Uh, okay, the, there we can just get rid of the video. Boom, 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 like that. That's where I want the stick to be at the end of this animation, right? So now, if you look at it, it does that, right? It goes up to where we want it to be. And then it's going to move back down because there's more animation after that. But, right? So that's the end goal. And let's go back to the beginning. Right here, 034211. Go to the arm, make sure that there's a key frame for this position right here, uh, for the rotation and the position. Right, then we jump forward to where the stick is. We go to the arm and we say, okay, well, I want the arm to be connected to the stick. So we move that right there. Then we look at the animation. 
and it looks like that. Okay, but now the arm and the stick, they're just doing whatever they want without the body being there. So, the same thing again. We go to the beginning of the animation, go to the tune, the character, create a new keyframe for where the animation is going to begin, go to the end of the animation, and then you move the character from left to right until he connects with the arm. And then there you have it. Whoop, 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 whoop. You can create some groovy dances with this technique. And that's how you do it. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I make it seem a lot easier than it actually is the first time you, you do it. Uh, it can be very frustrating. Oh, and um, just say um, when we reach this point, keyframe position right here this screen is going to start moving so we get a keyframe position right here and then we just move it up like that all right so now it looks like this boop it's like i move my arm up stick and then i like press a button or something and then the screen boop, pops up like that boop. now you can see the stick and the arm, they move a bit awkwardly. Um, you may have to like refine that, um, like s um, throughout the animation, create like a few different keyframe, uh, like a few other key points. Like, oh, okay, well, the arm, this point should be you know, here, and the tune should actually be over here, right? So that makes the animation uh, work a little bit better and then you can fine tune it as much as you want after that this is how i teach all my classes it's also affected by the fact that there's key points afterwards after this animation that we just created that have nothing to do with the thing uh, and then the the movie comes in, it fades in, and then it scales up. Uh, same principle, it just scales up, and then all these other things, they fade out. So take the opacity from 100 back down to zero. And that does this. And then I cut the documentary a little bit. Some parts of it weren't as relevant, and then some parts uh, I wanted to put in a different order. I put in this part of the memorandum, reminding the viewer about the, what the memorandum said about the sugar, uh, sugar legislation. The oil companies in Cuba. The United States retaliated for that by cutting off the Cuban sugar quota. Right. So the documentary talks about cutting off the Cuban sugar quota. And so I remind the viewer, hey, you remember what that memo said about sugar legislation. Uh, so just put that in there. And that's just a mask with a feather around it. So this is the original image, right? Um, but it has a mask around it. It looks like this. So if I were to move this mask, you could actually see hiding behind is the original image. It's the whole thing, right? I just made a mask around it and it has a feather. So it looks, it has a... Uh, Whatchamacallit, it looks um, has like a gradient around the edge. And yeah, that one just scales up and fades in at the same time, and then it fades out. Easy. That I used. Here's a question mark. Pretty simple. Um, it goes, doesn't move in the position at all, it just scales up. And it rotates, goes from zero degrees, and then at the end of the animation, it's at one x zero. And what that means is that it's done one rotation since the beginning of the animation. So I can make this five x zero, and that means that in the same amount of time, it's gonna rotate five times. Now look at the animation. This change seems to only have been implemented on paper. Crazy. Or we could just make it. Not even 1x, 
just uh, like that. Make this change seems to only have been implemented on paper. Just a little bit. Rotate it until it gets to right there and then stop. Or, you know, you make it 24x and then this it will... change seems to only have been implemented on paper. That's, you know, that's fun. Uh, that's about it. Some tips. Um, check under keyboard shortcuts. Uh, I've, I've set um, ripple delete to shift Q. Uh, ripple trim to previous edit uh, is on Q. Ripple trim next edit to playhead is on W. Um, and what, like, ripple editing, what that means is, um, it allows you to, I wonder if I could find, like, a good example. Let's say here, for example. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, if you get the, the razor tool and you want to cut something, hold shift and you'll cut through everything instead of just the one thing, right? So say if I cut right here, then I made a cut in memo, but nothing else. But if I hold shift and I cut, then I've made a cut in everything. So it saves you some time. Uh, so say I want to just delete this. I, I want to just take this and delete it. But now there's a big gap in this video. And in order for me to fix it, I would have to select everything on the timeline like this, and then move it in, like, eh, like, like, like this, and that's and, it, and it, that's very annoying, right? Instead, uh, you can do what's called a ripple delete. So I just select what I want to delete, and I do Shift and Q, and that deletes it. Ripple deletes it, and that means that not only is it deleted. But everything that follows is shifted uh, so that it's just an immediate, uh, it's just completely removed and the video doesn't have a gap in it. The last thing that I wanted to show you was the thumbnail. So for the thumbnail, what I had was an outline of Cuba, of Cuba as a map. And I had a bunch of different flags. So I had, uh, I had a Cuban flag, American flag and the Spanish flag, historically accurate as well. And so I made uh, this one, American Cuba and Spanish Cuba and Cuban Cuba. So in Photoshop, let's say we want, for whatever reason, an Irish Cuba. So we got the flag of Ireland right here. Uh, I'll select the quick selection tool. Go to uh, the, the Cuban Cuba layer. And just go over the whole image like this until you the whole screen is selected. And then let go and it will select every pixel that's on this layer. I think there might be a quick way to do that, but that's just how I do it. Uh, then uh, we could hide this layer actually. Go back down to the Ireland flag. Go up to select, click inverse, and what that does is it select everything except what's in your current selection, right? And then press delete, and we're left with an outline of Cuba with the colors of the Irish flag. Then right click it, go to blending options, and under stroke, I have a Size 4, black stroke, position outside. Uh, you can experiment with that. You can make it a bit smaller. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's how I made that. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. And goodbye.